time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the Philadelphia Phillies. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Thursday evening to you, wherever you may be, wrapping up the work with Philadelphia and waiting the arrival of the Milwaukee Brewers. Way back in 1953, on this day in Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia, the Brooklyn Dodgers were playing the Philadelphia Phillies. On the mound for the Phillies, the great Robin Roberts. And in the eighth inning, Roberts got in trouble, and Philadelphia went to the bullpen. That snapped a streak, believe it or not, of 28 consecutive complete games by Robin Roberts, including a 17-inning masterpiece against the then Boston Braves. Well, with that in mind, pitching is always the top subject, and the Dodgers go to the top again, this time with Zach Granke, a record of 7-2, and 3-0 and as a Dodger against Philadelphia, 4-1 lifetime. Granke not only has an earned run average of 1.4, he brings in a streak of 27-2 and consecutive scoreless innings. On the mound for the Phillies, a 22-year-old with a record of 3-2. and two. His name's Severino Gonzalez from Panama. He's about 6'2", but he checks in at only 155 pounds. We'll get to what we hope will be a good ball game and a whole lot more coming up right after this.
evening to you wherever you may be. We're at Dodger Stadium with Zach Granke on his way to the mound trying to keep it going. Granke not only is in quest of his eighth win, he has suffered just two defeats. He has a brilliant earned run average of 1.4. He has a string 27 and two-thirds consecutive scoreless innings. So Granke, who has not given up a run since Justin Upton hit a home run with two out in the eighth inning in San Diego, that was the 13th of June. For Pete McCannon, he'd like to walk away with a split of his four-game series. Right now, he's lost two of three. His lineup, Ben Revere, opens up in center field. Cesar Hernandez at second. Michael Franco at third. Ryan Howard at first. Cody Ashey in left field. Dominic Brown in right. Freddie Galvis at shortstop. Carlos Ruiz behind the plate. And Severino Gonzalez on the mound. We had been told that Cameron Rupp was going to be the catcher, but we flashed on the board Carlos Ruiz, so we will double check and see. If it is Ruiz, that means we have a Panamanian battery for tonight. Meanwhile, as Ruiz is walking around, I know that Rupp is wearing shin guards, so I think we just happen to make a little mistake in putting Ruiz up there. Okay. No harm, no foul, as Chick would say. And Ben Revere checks in. Revere hitting 353 against the Dodgers here at Dodger Stadium. And the left hand hitting center fielder tonight. Herrera played last night. And Rivera takes low and inside. Ball one. One and all the count to Ben Rivera. He is the fourth hardest batter in the National League to strike out. Just one strikeout in ten and a half at bats. Beautiful evening. 72 degrees. And the 1-0 pitch drops in nicely for a strike. One ball and one strike to Ben Rivera. Then you have Cesar Hernandez and Michael Franco, the third baseman. Phillies have been struggling. They've lost 11 of the last 14. The 1 1 pitch at Chopper to short. Rollins is on it. Guns to first. And we have one away. Take a look at the Dodgers defensively. And they shape up this way Gonzalez and Kendrick, Rollins and Kayaspo, Ethier, Peterson and Pui. Behind the plate, Yasmani Grandal and Zach Ranke very much on the mound. Cesar Hernandez coming up. He's been impressive during the series. He's had 29 hits since the 1st of June, batting 294, and a switch hitter takes a strike. Hernandez in this series, 3 for 13. The strike one pitch on the way is swung on and fouled back. When you talk with those who follow Philadelphia, they say the future right now would be for Freddie Galvis eventually to wind up being the second baseman because of an excellent shortstop in the minor leagues. And meanwhile, Chase Utley, the veteran, an all star, a great second baseman, stands and waits. He's been out with a bad ankle. Next pitch fouled away, and the count remains no balls and two strikes to Cesar Hernandez. Hernandez back up and waiting. Of course, Philadelphia has a lot of young players, so when you're around that team, you're all talking about the future. And there is strike three called to Cesar Hernandez. The veteran umpire, Jim Reynolds, behind the plate. And with one out, Michael Franco will be coming up. Zach Granke has an opposition batting average of only 200. The toughest pitcher in the National League, Max Scherzer, the opposition 188. Francisco Liriano and Johnny Cueto, opposition batting average of 190. So Granke now with two out, and here is Franco. Michael has a look at his strike, and the count 0 and 1. Waiting on deck, big Ryan Howard. Franco right hand batter pulls his right foot out of the way of a low pitch one ball and one strike. Since June the second he's hit 340. 
and he was the rookie of the month for June when he batted 352. So Mike Elfranco with two out the third baseman right hand hitter looks at a pitch off the plate and the count two and one. Granky with a ZRA of 1.4 the next man is A.J. Burnett 1.9 2 one pitch is low down at the foot of Michael three and one the count. Zach taking his time trying to win his eighth on his way to the all star game. Next pitch is foul back and the count runs three and two. Juan Samuel coaching at first former Dodger John Mizora coaching at third Pete McCannon the interim manager interim for the third time. He has a lot of fun talking about that. Pete was the interim manager for two other teams besides Philadelphia. 3 2 pitch ground ball to short Rollins is on it and fires to first and that's it to complete the thought McCannon was the interim manager with Pittsburgh interim with Cincinnati and interim with Philadelphia and at the end of half a nothing Philadelphia nothing Dodgers coming up. Now we can take a look at Don Mattingly's lineup and it begins as usual although they've been alternating quite a bit but Jock Peterson is back up on top. Then you have Howie Kendrick and Adrian Gonzalez. Yasmani Grandal hits cleanup. Andre Ethier in left. Yasiel Puig in right. Jimmy Collins at short. Alberto Cayespo at third. Zach Granke on the mound. On the mound Severino Gonzalez. He is 22 years old. He won't be 23 till the end of September. He's about 6'2", but he checks in at only 155 pounds. He was signed by the Phillies as a free agent four years ago, and we'll see how he goes with a record of three and two. Peterson, first ball swinging, pops it up in fair ground. Now in foul and back into fair as Freddie Galvis. So we have one away on the first pitch and we can set Philadelphia defensively. It's Howard Hernandez Galvis and Franco Ashy Revere and Brown Rupp behind the plate Gonzalez on the mound. So one out first inning Howie Kendrick checks in. Kendrick hitting 294. Right hand hitter has a look at the first pitch in for a strike and they count 0 and 1. Kind of an interesting story of Severino Gonzalez as he works to an established veteran like Howie Kendrick. Next pitch high one and one. He was signed out of Panama in 2011. Two nondescript years in the Venezuelan Summer League. And then made what was supposed to be two cameo performances. Kendrick a long drive to center going back to Javier on the track and makes the catch two feet from the wall. So a long fly ball out 
We have two down. Adrian Gonzalez coming up. So what was supposed to be a two-star county Gonzalez. local performance at low class A, and he was so dominant in the two stars, he forced the Phillies to sign him, and they sent him right away to Redding, and Redding is in double A, and he moved along. He throws a fastball that has a tendency to cut, and he was relying so much on the cutter that down in the minor leagues, they told him to stop throwing it for a while, and that was to develop his changeup. Adrian Gonzalez looks at a strike, and they count 0 and 1. So Adrian checking in with his 16 home runs, 51 RBIs, hitting 290, and a modest five game hitting streak. He hits one foul off to the left, out of play. So Adrian, no balls and two strikes against Severino Gonzalez. No score, bottom of the first inning. Final game of the four game series, Milwaukee for the weekend. Next pitch high and away, ball one, one and two. Talking about a beautiful evening, 72 degrees. If you are a baseball fan, probably the last place you want to be is in Colorado. Ground ball to Ryan Howard. He'll take it to the bag, and that's that. There's a rain delay in Colorado right now with Atlanta. They have had 20 hours of rain delay already this year at Coors Field in Denver. And at the end of an inning, no score. Cody Ashey and Dominic Brown. Last year, Granke was a 17 game winner, and you thought he couldn't pitch much better than that, and he's been overwhelming this year. Look at the difference ERA from 2.7 to 1.4. The whip, that's walks, hits, innings, 1 1 to 0 0.8, and so it goes from last year to this. Granke's first pitch to Howard misses, one ball and no strikes to Big Ryan. Who once back in 2006 hit 58 home runs. Granky ready. Now the 1 0 pitch. Ryan takes a change up and that misses. 2 and 0 the count. Howard is not Howard anymore, and yet he is always a threat to bust one out. He has 14 home runs. He hits him to all over the ballpark. He promptly bangs one in the exposed left side of the infield for a base hit. Over to get it is Ethier. So Ryan Howard, a single to left, in talking about hitting his home runs all over the ballpark, he is a giant of a batter, left hand hitter, but most of his home runs go to left field. He has 82 to left, 56 to left center, 77 to straightaway center, 59 to right center, 74 to right. But he's that strong to have 82 the other way. Cody Ashey. 
hitting 251, playing very well for the last two weeks, hitting 339 over that stretch. Granky ready and delivers, drops a curveball in there for a strike. Ashy did not play in last night's game. Left hand batter pinch hit the game before and struck out. The strike one pitch is low. Ashy started game one and he had a walk and two singles. So Granky with a one ball, one strike count. Howard at first. Nobody out, second inning, no score. Granky said, Here he comes, and that one is low, so he's behind two and one. Granky now a streak of 28 in two thirds scoreless innings since Justin Upton homered in San Diego on the 13th of June. 2 1 pitch. Granky's fastball is swung on and missed. He's getting awfully close now with the side out in the first inning, 28 and two thirds. If he gets an out in the second inning, that'll give him 29. That would tie Don Sutton, who had a streak of 29 scoreless innings back in 1972. And the breaking ball is swung on and, well, going to see a little discussion at home plate. As she says, I think that he fouled the ball in the dirt. Jim Reynolds says no. And Cody walks away. So that's it. That now makes it 29 scoreless innings. Breaking ball in the dirt. Short hop by Grandall. So 29, and here is Dominic Brown. The next man, Bob Miller. Bob had a string of 31 scoreless innings way back in 1964. Granky set at the belt, looks over his left shoulder. Now to Dominic Brown, in for a strike. Brown is one of those fellows, tremendous ability, had a great first year, and then just could not even come close to matching it. However, he's on his way back. He's been doing pretty well since being called up from Lehigh Valley. It's a big bouncer to Kendrick. He'll go to Rollins. They throw to first too late, but they do get the force play. And the batter will be Freddie Galvis. So 4 6 to erase Howard. Brown, who runs very well, has stolen two bases. And here's Galvis coming up. Galvis, a switch hitter. He has a 10 game hitting streak. And he's hitting 436 during the streak. We have already seen him lay down a beautiful bunt for a base hit. So the Dodgers have to be well aware of his abilities and they have to watch Brown who runs well as Galvis checks in left handed. Frankie looks Brown stays in the pitch outside ball one. Galvis flashy shortstop. As we said there are those in the Philadelphia camp that talk about him being a future second baseman. But at the same time his buddy Cesar Hernandez is doing an outstanding job at second. There are two kids from the Tame Town in Venezuela played against each other from Little League all the way up. Freddie fouls it back and the count one ball and one strike. Galvis not at all superstitious wearing 13 as Cesar Hernandez watches. Of course then again for all we know maybe Galvis is superstitious and wears number 13. Throw to first, not in time to get Brown. One ball and one strike. Two outs, second inning. Granke and Gonzalez put their heads together on that pickoff play. We're also watching the plate umpire, Jim Reynolds. Maybe somebody in the Dodger dugout hollered something about how close that play was at first and hold on while we check. Though so they checked and there was no chance, no reason to review it. So Brown is back. Granky set. His 1 1 pitch on the way. Galvis takes low, ball two, two and one the count. Granky as a Dodger trying to win his 40th game. He is 39 and 14. He has two complete games. 
Zach ready 2 1 pitch to Galvis on the outside corner and the count 2 and 2. Freddie Galvis is 5 10 about 180. He'll be 26 years old in November. As we mentioned from Venezuela. The 2 2 pitch on the way. Brown holding and there's a little ground ball to the right of the mound. Granky's on it. Feeds Gonzalez and that's it. So now he starts fresh. No runs. One hit. A man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score. Bottom of the second inning on a beautiful summer's evening at sunset time the upper deck and right field still splashed in sunlight. The field itself in shade the lights have been on and not a zephyr to stir the flags in center field. Here come the Dodgers with the Osmani Grandal then it'll be Andre Ethier and Yasiel Puig against young Severino Gonzalez. 22 year old ready makes his first pitch and Grandall takes low and inside ball one one and oh. Grandall 14 home runs two of them in this series 36 runs batted in takes a strike. Phillies leave here and go to San Francisco Cole Hamels will open up that series against Madison Bumgarner. The one one pitch a good change up remember we told you. As Hamels looks on from the Philadelphia dugout, they took the fastball away in the minor leagues for a little while to make sure that he would learn to throw the chain, and he just threw a dandy. One two pitch is swung on, hit to left field and deep. Back goes Ashy, but he's not on the track, right a foot from it, and makes the catch. So grand off, fly ball, one down here in the second inning. The Phillies could use some innings from Gonzalez. He has been in six games and he has piled up 25 innings, so just a little bit more than four innings a start. So the young right hander gets one out, and here's Andre Ethier batting 276, but for the last week on fire, hitting 450. Andre holds up on the first pitch that misses one ball and no strikes. And the next one to Andre swung on fouled away. No balls and two strikes. Second inning no score. Zach Granke has 30 scoreless innings so far 
as Ethia takes a pitch low. Andre one for three hit by a pitch in his last game. He has four triples, 10 home runs, and hitting a solid 284. Now on deck is Yasiel Puig. Soft line drive off the glove of Franco. And Ethier is aboard on the base hit. So Ethier hits one off the glove of Franco. Michael lunging for it. Knocked it down, but that's all he could do. So with a runner at first, that'll bring up Yasiel Puig. Boy, Puig has really done a complete about face. As Franco keeps thinking about so near and yet so far. The first 17 games this year, Puig hit 379, three home runs and eight runs batted in. I mean, he was unconscious. The pitch to him is swung on, hit in the air to center. Coming up is Revere to make the catch. And back to first goes Ethia. The last 22 games, Puig has 15 hits, hitting less than 185, no home runs, two runs batted in. So Puig is struggling as much as I'm sure he has ever struggled in his career playing this game. And the batter will be Jimmy Rollins. Rollins, the switch hitter, batting 213, but four for 12, hitting 333 against his old ball club, including a home run, a double, and five runs batted in. Gonzalez ready, fastball in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. One thing they talked about Gonzalez, when he threw his fastball, it was basically a cutter. And coming from Panama, you can understand he loved Mariano Rivera. Strike one pitch is lifted into right field. Coming in for it is Dominic Brown. And the right fielder makes the catch, and that's that. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of two, no score. Take on the field for a fireworks show featuring music from the 70s. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Cameron Rupp, right-hand hitting catcher, checks in. Granke doesn't mess around, comes right after him, and a fastball swung on and missed. 0 oh, and 1 to count. So Granke now has 30 consecutive scoreless innings. With Rupp followed by the pitcher Gonzalez and Revere. Zach works it off the plate and a one ball one strike count. Cameron Rupp one home run half a dozen runs batted in. The one one pitch on away 
fastball foul back. The veteran, the 36 year old Carlos Ruiz, played two of the four, so Rep gets another chance to play. Cameron, one for four in the one game. Now the one two pitch on the way that's in the dirt. His first home run for Rupp was against the Yankees CC Sabathia. So Granky being very careful. With an ERA of one point four. He has really been something. The two two pitch on the way and Rupp fouls it back. Ruff has been in 35 games including tonight. So the big catcher right hand batter bends at knees and waist. Ranky ready and the 2 2 pitch swung on hit in the air to right field and deep. Back goes Puig away back to the track makes the catch right at the little wall in front of the stands inside the right field foul line. So a nice play by Yasiel he had to go and get it. Rupp just misses and we have one out in the third inning. So Cameron got a breaking ball went down to get it and he's big and strong but Pui came over and made a fine play. So with one out. Severino Gonzalez checks in right hand batter looks at a strike and they count on one. Gonzalez is one for eight and he has struck out four of the eight at bats. Hitting 125. Next one to him off the plate. One ball, one strike. No indication in any of the notes about Severino that he is a good hitter. The 1 1 pitch on the way. Garcia takes low and away ball two, two and one. Phillies general manager Ruben Amaro Jr. taking in the ball game. Talking about uh, young Severino said he's a command guy. He's pretty advanced. He knows how to pitch. 2 1 pitch. Gonzalez fouls it back. And the count 2 and 2. It's a surprise, really. I mean, he's big enough at 6 feet 2. But you really have to impress scouts when you weigh 155 pounds to become a major league pitcher. But they figure they'll fatten him up. 2 2 pitch is a check swing. They look no swing, says Manny Gonzalez. 3 and 2 to Severino. Granky feet together on the first base side of the rubber. Now the 3 2 pitch on the way. Garcia swings, pops it up on the right side. Kendrick backs out on the grass and makes the catch for the second out. So Granky needs another out to have 31 consecutive scoreless and that would tie Bob Miller who pitched for the Dodgers along with the Cardinals and several other clubs back in 1964. I think Bob also pitched for the Phillies. So here's Revere grounded to short in the first inning has a lot of success against Granky six for 18. 333 batting average. Kayaspo plays him on the grass at third, and the first pitch a little high, ball one. Because to be a little high, as we've talked, Revere, quite a solid all around ball player, but he's five feet eight, one of the smallest first round picks ever. He looks at a pitch low, ball two. Mike Fontenot, originally a first round pick from LSU with Baltimore was the same size. 2 and 0 the count to Ben Revere. Fastball comebacker speared by the gold glove. And that'll be that. So that makes it 31 scoreless inning, tying Bob Miller's record back in 1964. And at the end of two and a half innings, no score.
land of the child. Not worried about any worldly problems. Enough energy there to light up a small city. Meanwhile, inside the stadium, bottom of the third, no score. By the way, we almost committed a huge oversight. Here's the first pitch to Kiaspo for a strike. 31 consecutive scoreless innings ties Bob Miller. It also ties Fernando Valenzuela. The next pitch low, one and one. Fernando had a string of 31 scoreless innings in 1980 and 81. Kind of a carryover streak. Kiaspo takes high ball two, two and one the count. So after Miller and Valenzuela, and there's Fernando. The pitch fouled away by Kiaspo. The next target would be Sandy Kopax, who had a 33 inning scoreless streak back in 1965. Two and two. Gonzalez fastball hit foul down the left field line out of play. The next stop for Granke would be 33 scoreless innings. Koufax and Hershiser. That's ball three. Then if he gets through six innings, eight innings, he'll get up to 35. And it would be Don Sutton and Fernando again. 3 2 pitch, ground ball wide at first, up with it nicely. Howard, a high feed, but a good play by Gonzalez. So Kiaspo grounds out 3 1. One out third inning, and Zach Granke, pretty Zach good Granke. hitter coming up. Granke has a half a dozen hits, including a double and an RBI. The big thing about Granke, he usually makes contact. Two for ten, including a home run against Philadelphia in his career. As a Dodger, Zach is three and zero against Philadelphia. And a strike. O oh, and one. Dodgers have one hit. Soft line drive by Ethier just off the glove of Michael Franco. High drive into deep left field. Ashy going back to the track at the wall. The one-handed. The so Granky came so close, and knowing that feeling is Justin Turner, hands on his head. Boy, Granky couldn't come much closer and gets a round of applause as he comes back. He got a fastball above the belt, and Ashy running parallel to the wall reached up and made the catch. So an agonizing, frustrating fly ball. One down, now two. Kind of a shy, sheepish grin on Granky's face as he comes back into the dugout. John Valentin talking to him as a hitting instructor. And the batter now, Jock Peterson. Peterson is fighting it. It happens to all of them. And he looks at a strike. Remember when Jock homered in five straight games? That was back in June. Since then, he's hit 168. 0 oh 2. He's had three home runs. But that's a drop in the batting average. And what's really disturbing, he's not that left handers are hurting him, right handers are doing a number on him as well. Strike two pitch to young jock swung on ground ball perfectly positioned and right there to handle it is Michael Franco. So down go the Dodgers and at the end of three no score.
Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee. With an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG, it's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. And by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hands. FlexAlert.org. Fourth inning, no score in the ball game. Dodgers and Phils, Granke against Gonzalez. It'll be Hernandez, Franco, and Howard in that order here in the fourth. Showing bunt, Hernandez instead takes a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Cesar struck out in the first inning. One ball and one strike. Don't forget the Brewers will be here starting tomorrow night. Craig Council, who took over for Ron Renicky, will bring his club in. Jimmy Nelson will open up. One one pitch is high, ball two, two and one. Mike Bolsinger will be on the mound for the Dodgers for tomorrow night's game. Saturday, there's a lot of discussion and guessing as to who will the pitcher be. 2 1 pitch to Hernandez. Ball three. We know Taylor Youngman will pitch for Milwaukee. But for the Dodgers, TBD to be determined. Sunday, Brent Anderson and Kyle Loach. 3 1 pitch makes it 3 and 2. Hernandez batting 293, one home run, 19 runs batted in. Got him. Outside corner. Down he goes. So Hernandez strikes out a second time. That would be three strikeouts for Granky. Number seven. Michael Franco. Little wait by Jim and then Reynolds punches him out. So one out in the fourth, and here's Michael Franco grounded a short in the first inning. Oh, and one. Franco recognized as a very good hitter, a very, very quick bat. He has 10 home runs. Hitting 294, most important, he is hitting third in the Phillies lineup. No balls and two strikes. Franco, with his 10 home runs, has only struck out 34 times. They get 35. Four strikeouts for Granky. And now Ryan Howard. Howard single a left field in the second inning. Ryan Howard. So Granky trying to get the 32 consecutive scoreless innings. And he has two outs in the inning. No score. That's more important than all. Top of the fourth. Fastball missed. Dodgers with that triangle defense. Kendrick a good 15 20 feet out on the grass in right field. Outfield deep and very much straight away. Ground ball. Gonzalez backhands. Feeds it to his man Granky. So 32 consecutive scoreless inning for Zach Granke. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. No score.
Saturday at 7:10, Dodgers and Brewers, and receive a Juan Uribe bobblehead presented by Farmer John. For more information, go to dodgers.com/promotion. Bottom of the fourth for the Dodgers, it'll be Kendrick, Gonzalez, and Grandall. Kendrick flied to center in the first inning. Starts him with the breaking ball off the plate. Ball one. Little ground ball. It'll be Ryan Howard underhanding, shoveling it in time to Gonzalez. So one out in the fourth inning. Number 23. Fabian Gonzalez grounded out to Ryan Howard back in the first inning. Gonzalez followed by Grandall. Adrian hitting 289. No runs and one hit for each side. Philadelphia, remember, they've lost 11 of the last 14 they've played. That's a strike. On one. That evens it up. One and one the count. Severino Gonzalez, 22 years old, weighs 155 pounds, six feet two. Off speed, rip foul, and the count one and two. The big thing, of course, at 155, you think about his stamina. And as we mentioned, he's been averaging just a couple of innings, about a little more than four innings a start. Little chopper. He'll flip it over to Ryan Howard. Two down in the fourth inning. He's been a professional since 2011. 2013, he was three different teams Reading, Lakewood, Clearwater. Last year, Reading, and now coming up from Lehigh Valley, here he is. Pass ball away, ball one. Grandall, fly ball deep to left. 2 and 0 the count. And ball three. Want to see Gray, uh, Grandall's trademark with Ethier on deck. There it is. And ball four. So a two out walk to Grandall. The batter now, Ethier, who singled off the glove of third baseman 16. Franco. Andre Ethier. Andre Ethier, one for one, coming up. And that's in for a strike. Phillies have managed to only win 11 games on the road. Dodgers wish them well at AT&T Park. Giants beat Philadelphia two out of three in Philadelphia. Two out bottom of the fourth no score. Sliced foul. That'll carry out of play. No balls and two strikes.
Outfield playing Andre just about straight away. And he gets hit by the pitch. So Andre Ethier is hit. For Ethier, that would be the fourth time that he's been hit by a pitch this year. Anybody complaining about being hit by a pitch should see Justin Turner, who's been hit eight times. So two on, two out. And Yasiel Pui coming up. A couple of the young Philadelphia pitchers were talking about the ball that Pui hit last night. I mean, he scorched the ball. And it was caught in center field by Odebel Herrera, who was out there at the time. It looked like a two iron, a low line drive that just took off, and Herrera leaped in the air to catch it. That's fouled away. 0 and 1 the SEL. Two on, two out on a walk and a hit batter. Right hander strike one pitch on the way. That's a drive down the left field line. Fair ball in the corner. That'll get one in. And it is going to get two in. The relay by Galvis is not in time. And the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead on the double by Queen. So Yashiel got a breaking ball and straightened it out. Just started to dip. And he got it and pulled it right down the line. Fair by at least a foot. And it drives in two. Now the batter is Jimmy Rollins. Yashiel with 11 doubles. And 12 runs batted in. So Granky's out in front two to nothing. High pop fly angling back is Franco to make the catch. So with two out a walk a hit batter and then the double and the Dodgers cash it in and at the end of four lead Philadelphia two to nothing. With two out in the fourth inning, Grandall walk. Then the batter, Gonzalez, and he suddenly was facing after the walk to Grandall. He hit Ethier on a no ball, two strike count. And that gave Puig the opportunity to come up, get the double, and give the Dodgers the lead. So now let's see about Granke as he works on Ashy, Brown, and Galvis. Round foul, 0 1. Two runs, two hits for the Dodgers. 
No runs, one hit for the Phils. I guess chances are if you stay close to a last place club, sooner or later, they're going to show you why they're a last place club. So the young Gonzalez with two out walks a batter and then hits a batter 0 oh and 2 and boom the double. 2 and 1 meanwhile the count to Ashy. Severino at 22 alone with his thoughts. 2 1 pitch. Ball 3. Waiting on deck hitting behind Ashy. Dominic Brown. Three and one. Fastball for a strike. Drankey came in with 27 and two thirds scoreless innings. Hard ground ball. Gonzalez will do it himself. So Granky gets an out, and now Dominic Brown. Where does Granky stand? ERA, he's first. Quality starts, he is first. The opposition batting average fourth behind Max Scherzer. Walks and innings and innings pitch, he's third. He has a record of seven and two. It's hard to believe with an earned run average of 1.4. You think he about 10 and 0. And a no ball two strike count. The Philadelphia Phillies this year have been shut out nine times, but they've been shut out eight times on the road. Fastball popped up. It's Gonzalez with Kendrick behind him, and Kendrick will make the play. Though we have two down in the fifth inning, the only hit, Howard single to left field in the second inning. Number 13, Freddie Galvez. So here's Freddie Galvis hit back to the box in the second inning. A threat to bunt. We saw him bunt for a base hit. Diaspo has to play him on the grass. And a strike. Granky throwing strikes has not walked anybody. And he has two out in the fifth inning. And a high fastball. 0 and 2. Galvis swings hard. He has three home runs, but he swings like he wants to have 33. Ball one. Two nothing Dodgers, two out, one ball and two strikes to the shortstop, Freddie Galvis. Two and two. Milwaukee, the last place team in the Central Division, they're 19 games back of the Cardinals. They had a winning stretch. They've won eight of ten. They'll be here tomorrow night. And just missed the outside corner. He had him set up for that. Three and two, the count to Galvis. Fastball foul tipped, and down he goes. Five strikeouts. So through five, that's 32 and two thirds scoreless inning for Zach Granke. Two nothing, Dot.
Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Now, during Toyota Summer Savings, you can save big on any 2015 Camry. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. 2 nothing Dodgers, bottom of the fifth inning. Alberta Cayaspo to start it off, then Zach Granke in top of the order, Jock Peterson. One ball and no strikes. Cayaspo grounded to Ryan Howard. That's a strike, one ball, one strike. Off speed pitch, two and one. Severino Gonzalez turning in a pretty good job except for that poor stretch in the fourth inning with two out walking Grandall and then hitting Ethier on a no ball two strike count that allowed Puig to come up and he doubled in the two runs. That's in there three and two. Boy he works in a hurry. And that's pop foul out of play. Coming over to take a look at Rupp, but way back in. Diaspo making a rare start. Came in hitting 235. Switch hitter, but with the Dodgers, he was hitting 286. And promptly strokes it to center right into Ben Revere's glove. No one out in the fifth inning. Number 21, Zach Greinke. Greinke hit a long fly ball to left field. Some people thought it was going to be a home run. Cody Ashey didn't. Caught it near the wall. Justin Turner was trying to wish the ball in. 0 and 1 to Zach. For Severino Gonzalez, his big league debut, he lasted two and two third innings. Change got it in there. Good pitch. 0 and 2. He has never gone past five and a third innings in six previous starts in the major leagues. And down goes Granky. Say a reminder, be sure Monday to join Alana Rizzo and Don Mattingly. They'll bring you an inside look at the best moments of the week on and off the field. So don't miss Dodger Clubhouse Monday at 8 on Sportsnet LA. Jock Peterson coming up 0 for 2. That strikeout. Gonzalez getting cranky. It's Severino's first strike out of the night. Peterson 0 for 2. And right away in a hole, no balls, one strike. Two runs, two hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for Philadelphia. That was a single by Ryan Howard in the second inning. Puig knocks in two. Dodgers lead 2 0 and a one ball, two strike count to Jock Peterson. Half swing, no swing. Two and two. Peterson really fighting himself to hold back. And three and two. Waiting on deck, Howie Kendrick. Gonzalez due to bat second in the second inning. And it is strike three called and Jock 
in his way to first base so thinking about center field but down he goes and at the end of five two nothing Dodgers. The All-Star game was played in Philadelphia. That was Mike Piazza's hometown. He returned in a big way. He homered 445 feet. He doubled in a run. The National League won the game. And Mike Piazza was the All-Star MVP, joining Maury Wills, Steve Garvey, and Don Sutton. Todd Worrell, the other Dodger in the All-Star game, hits one scoreless inning in relief. Let's go back to this one. Granky working on Cameron Rupp, the catcher. Then it will be Severino Gonzalez and Ben Revere. Fastball strike. Granky has struck out five. He is 32 and two third consecutive scoreless innings. And the big catcher just missed hitting one out and then fly to right. Oh, and one. Off speed that's pulled down the line hooking as it goes in the corner foul. So that off speed pitch was kind of a hanger and grand dog going out to Granky. So he kind of got away with one there. No balls and two strikes the count to the catcher Cameron Rupp. Take another look. On that slow breaking ball right down the line, but it kept hooking close enough. 0 oh 2. Fastball check swing, and it's on the corner and a tag, strike three. Well, Rep says no way, but he walks away. Six strikeouts for Granky. So he is now technically worth 33 consecutive scoreless innings. That gets him even with Sandy Koufax, who did it in 1963, Oral Hershiser, who did it in 1984. Next stop, Don Sutton. There's a comebacker. Another nice play by Granke. So Granke gave up the base hit to Howard. That's the only runner. So after that base hit, three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen in a row. And the batter is Ben Revere, rounded to short and hit back to the box. Kiaspo in on the grass. A slow breaking ball in for a strike. 0 and 1.
Fastball and it's hit to short. Nice hop for Rollins. Guns it over. Easy inning. 15 in a row retired by Zach Granke. And we're going to the bottom of the six. He did it on six pitches. Two nothing Dodgers. Be one of the first 15,000 kids 14 and under in attendance Sunday at 110 Dodgers and Brewers and you receive a Dodgers kids hamper presented by Time Warner Cable. For more information go to Dodgers.com slash promotion. Nothing will hamper the Dodgers from giving away the hamper to the kids and we go to the bottom of the six. It'll be Kendrick Gonzalez and Grandall. Line drive base hit. So we mentioned for Severino Gonzalez. He has not gone long. He has not gone past five and a third innings. Well, he's got five innings. Hendrick now singles. And really, he's been very impressive except for the fourth inning with two out. When he walked Grandall and then hit Ethier 0 and 2. And then Puy came up and doubled, and that accounts for the two runs. One ball, no strikes. That's in there. Good change. 22 years old. It'll be 23 the end of September. One ball and one strike. I bet when you see him next year, he'll be a lot more than 155 pounds. They want to fatten him up to increase his stamina and his strength. One and one. Fouled away, one and two. Adrian getting ready to go to Cincinnati. 16 home runs, 51 runs batted in. There's a beach ball loose in right field, so Dominic Brown has to get it. Timeout for the moment. All right, play back in. Lopes, meanwhile, has something to say to Kendrick. One and two. Off speed and hit down the line, hooking in the corner and go. Hits the foul ball. Home run. So an off speed pitch and Adrian hits his 17th by hitting the pole. Remember, it's the, the wrong wording in baseball. It is not a foul ball because if you hit it, it's a fair ball. And the Dodgers. 
pick up a single to Kendrick, home run Gonzalez, and a four to nothing lead. Slow breaking ball down, and Gonzalez, like most left hand batters, loves that pitch down. So, four nothing Dodgers. Gonzalez hits it out, and now here's Grandall who flied to left and walked. High pop foul off third. Franco coming over. Leans in and makes the catch. Nice play by Michael. A lot of times an infielder who does not quit on a foul ball will be rewarded. So many times it looks like it's going in the stand and it has a tendency to come back. That one just did come back enough and he was able to reach in and make a fine play. From every angle. Tough it up, but he makes it. Somebody spilled some, some water. So here is Andre Ethier, singled and hit by a pitch, holds up on ball one. Well, the Dodgers got out in front last night, five to nothing. And that was much too much for the Phils to do against a pitcher like Clayton Kershaw. Well, tonight the Dodgers have pulled out in front four to nothing, which would appear to be a very tough chore for Zach Granke. I don't know if Kershaw is celebrating or not, but he got rid of the facial hair. He's a clean shaven left hander. Look at there. And looks younger and better for it. Two and one to count. Two and two to Andre Ethier. I don't know. When I first started, most of the players looked like uh, Jock Peterson. Half of them now look like Gabby Hayes. If you know who Gabby Hayes is. Three and two the count to Andre Ethier. And Yashiel, well, and right away a picture of Scott Van Slyke. Sitting next to Jock Peterson. There you go. That sums it all up. That's outside for ball four. So young Gonzalez and Cameron Rupp goes out there like a Dutch uncle to talk to him. He has been bothered by the home run ball. He has given up five. Now Ryan Howard in to give him a little encouragement. And here's the man who hurt him in the fourth inning. Yasiel Puig, who doubled in two. So the players have been there. Take another look. Puig driving that ball just inside the left field foul line. So the Dodgers picked up two. And now Gonzalez hits one with Kendrick aboard. Big hug in the dugout. You know, Puig appreciated that from Scott Van Slyke. Everybody on the club. Realizing what he's been going through. Okay, they have certainly counseled Severino Gonzalez. So here is Puig, fly to center, doubled in two. For Yasiel, in the last 23 games, the two RBIs he knocked in tonight. Gives him four. Fastball missed ball one. It'll be Hernandez, Franco, and Howard in the seventh inning. And fastball in there. Fidgety up there. One and one. 
Pretty good fastball one and two. Gonzalez certainly not overpowering. That fastball was 89. And so Puig up there fooled on the next pitch on the heels of the fastball and strikes out. Two down here in the sixth inning. That would only be the second strikeout for Gonzalez. Jimmy Rollins flied to right and popped up. 0 for 2. 211 with eight home runs and 29 RBIs. Getting behind him, Alberto Cayasco. Ball one. Jimmy Nelson and Mike Bolsinger tomorrow night at 7:10. Nelson is six and eight. Bolsinger four and three. One and one to Rollins. And pulled over the head of a leaping Howard and down the line. We'll watch Eve here. He is going to be stopped at third. And into second base with the double goes Jimmy Rollins. So Jimmy, another opportunity to taunt his old club with a bullet to right. So in the inning, Kendrick single, Gonzalez homered. Two outs later, after the walk to Eve here, Rollins doubles him to third. Big Howard up the ladder but couldn't get it. And the ball goes in the corner pursued by Dominic Brown. So that will be all for Severino Gonzalez. He'll be coming out. So he went five and two third innings. A little bit longer. Until he gets bigger weight wise he's 155. He's going to have a lot of trouble going deep into a game in the big leagues. We'll be right back. But surely coming to the end of a good homestand against the Mets and the Phillies. Now they await the arrival of Milwaukee. And following Sunday's game, of course, you have the All Star game on Tuesday. Dodgers pick up on the Friday, the 17th, to start a very tough road trip. Washington, Atlanta, and four with the New York Mets. Bob McClure, the pitching coach, talking to Severino Gonzalez. He goes five and two thirds. Elvis Arajo picks up for him. He's another young man out of Venezuela. And a breaking ball misses ball one. Kayaspo grounded out, flied out, 0 for 2. Arajo really gets your attention, especially standing on a 10 inch mound. He is six feet six. Little squirt job. 
the run is going to score unless the out and it's there at first and that'll be that. So the Dodgers settle for two more. That'll do it for Garcia and it is four to nothing thanks to a big swing by Adrian Gonzalez with a man aboard Hendrick. Four nothing Dodgers. Seven to Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Acura It's That Kind of Summer event. Scott Van Slyke takes over for Andre Ethier. Not sure. Andre had a base hit. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth. I'm not sure if that took him out of the game. He walked in the sixth. Meanwhile, Granky. Ready to work against Hernandez, Franco, and Howard. Ball one. 33 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. So the next stop up the ladder would be Don Sutton's 35 consecutive back in 1972. Off speed is in there. Valenzuela had a streak of 35 in 1981. One ball, one strike. Ground ball to the hole, plugging it up is Kendrick. So the Phillies still have just one hit. That was a sing by Ryan Howard, second inning, single to left field. Number seven, Michael Franco. Michael Franco grounded to short and struck out, 0 for 2. Granky putting on an all star performance tonight. Fastball, 0 and 1. He hits 91 on the gun. Two. Franco, 10 home runs in 51 games, well over 225 plate appearances. He had struck out 35 times. No balls and two strikes. And that's going to be lifted to center. Peterson is there. I would think last night and again tonight, the younger Philadelphia pitchers are going to school. I mean, it's not a bad classroom. And the instructors are Clayton Kershaw last night and Zach Granke tonight. Two out in the seventh. And here's the man with the only hit. Ryan Howard. 
Howard single a left grounded out one four two. Eighty eight miles an hour with a lot of sink to it. Ryan with 14 home runs. He hits him out everywhere. Oh and two. He is not the Ryan Howard of 2006. In his 10th year. Boy that was a memorable year when he hit 58. Mm. Oh and two. And down he goes. So that's 34 and two third consecutive scoreless innings for Zach Granke. The next out he gets, he will tie Don Sutton's 35. And at the end of six and a half, it's four to nothing, Dodgers. Nothing favor of the Dodgers. Zach Granke facing Arahu. Granke a long out to left field in the third inning and then struck out in the fifth. Whoa, he was trying to hit one out, losing his helmet. One ball and one strike to Zach Granke. Zach has allowed one hit through seven innings, a leadoff single by Ryan Howard in the second inning, and that's it. He's retired 18 in a row. So you put it another way for Granke in seven innings, he's faced only 22 batters. One and two. Looked like a slider that came in on the hands. Still one and two. Elvis Araujo. Originally signed with the Cleveland Indians in 2008. Signed on his 16th birthday. One and two. Fastball fouled away. Araujo. Will be 24 years old the day after the All Star game. Oh. 
One ball, two strikes. Fastball missed. Arahu with a fastball slider, and they tell me a changeup that needs a little work. And down goes Granky. So one away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the batter will be Jock Peterson. Peterson is 0 for 3. Popped up, grounded out. Struck out. Arahu, by the way, denies his weight. That's interesting. He's listed six feet six, 215 pounds. He says he weighs 280. Oh, and one. Doesn't look 280, but that's what he said. Maybe just to try and intimidate some hitters. There's a good slider. Oh, and two. Peterson now has dipped to 228. One ball and two strikes. Another thing about Arahu, he made his debut at 16 at the rookie level, Venezuelan Summer League, and then missed two years following Tommy John surgery. Well, he has certainly recovered. He's been clocked as high as the high 90s with his fastball. Of course, they make remarkable recoveries these days from the TJ surgery. One and two. Two and two. Peterson trying to extend the inning. One out bottom of the seventh four to nothing Dodgers. Three and two. Howie Kendrick waiting on deck. And there's low for ball four. So Peterson draws the walk. With one out, Kendrick coming up. Howie is one for three. Kendrick fly to center, grounded to first, and single to left. Four runs, five hits, no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, only Howard single in the second inning, the only base runner. No errors for the Phils. Peterson runs well, but he doesn't have the knowledge in his first year, nor does he know anything about Araujo. He's stolen two bases, but Jock has also been caught five times. 0-1 to Howie Kendrick. Elvis is in the building, on the mound. The Brewers here tomorrow night to open up a three game series. Friday and Saturday nights at 7 10. Sunday at 1 10. That's fouled away. So 0 and 2 the count to Howie. Dodgers scored two runs in the fourth inning with two outs. Grandall walk and on a no ball two strike count. Andre Ethier hit by a pitch. 
That brought up Puig, who doubled in the runs. Soft line drive caught by Hernandez for the second out. That'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez grounded out in the first inning. Grounded back to the pitcher in the fourth and then in the sixth. Came up with Kendrick aboard. Got a pitch around the knees and hits it down the line. It hit the foul pole or the fair pole as it should be called. And it's 4 nothing Dodgers. Adrian 17 home runs 53 runs batted in hitting a solid 291. Ashy Brown and Galvis do up in the eighth inning. Ranky has a one hitter tonight through seven. Granke started the night with an earned run average of 1.5. Now that brings up a point because he's heading for the All Star game. The last major league pitchers to reach the All Star break with an ERA of under 1.4 and at least 100 innings Don Drysdale, Bob Gibson, and Luis Tion. That was in the last year before the mound was lowered. 1968. A drive to center. Revere has that on his screen. And that'll be that. A walk to Peterson and nothing else. But we are heading to the eighth. Four to nothing. Dodgers. Worth Granky, but you also have to add Yasiel Puig's two-run double, Adrian Gonzalez two-run home run. So Granky, with seven innings under his belt, 34 and two-thirds consecutive scoreless innings, and the next stop on his parade, the next out that he gets, he would then tie Don Sutton, who had 35 consecutive innings back in 1972, and Fernando Valenzuela who had 35 consecutive innings in 1981. Bodie Ashey 0 for 2 struck out grounded out. And a one hopper backhanded by Kendrick set for the throw and gets him. That's another thing when you have a pitcher like Granky everyone on his toes. So there are the streaks. He's right up there now with Sutton and Valenzuela. He won't be able to catch teammate Clayton Kershaw tonight. Not till after the All-Star game. And of course then you get into the big numbers. Drysdale and Hershiser. One out. Here's Brown. Right. I'm sure when he had the 27 home runs in his first year. 
He was downtown Brown in Philadelphia. Oh and two to Dominic. Brown is six five. You watch him during batting practice shagging fly balls in right field and you know he's a fellow who really loves to play. Little roller Granky's going to catch up to it and just keep on going. So that's 20 in a row retired by Granky. The only man to get on Ryan Howard in the second inning. Kershaw last night made 123 pitches, eight hits and no runs. 88 pitches for Granky with two out in the eighth inning. Here's Galvis hit back to the box struck out. Always a threat to bunt and maybe against a pitcher like Granky having a night like tonight. He'll try to lay one down. Ball one. One and one. Phillies have won 29 games, 11 on the road. They've played reasonably well against the Western Division. They're seven and nine against the West. They're on the edge of losing 12 of their last 15 games before going up to AT&T Park. So the Cody Ashes and the rest of the young players, the Michael Francos, Philadelphia hopes and waits for them to mature. Just about every pitcher staff in the league could use improvement additions. I mean, you look at uh, Philadelphia, you say, well, they they need pitching. The Dodgers right night. As they go into the weekend, if Sao, Shin Hu Sao, if he gets into the game, the Dodgers will have used 25 different pitchers already this year, and they're in first place. Got him. The Galva strikes out a second time. That is 21 in a row. It also means 35 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. And there's one inning left for Granky to move up the ladder a little bit more. Still 4 nothing Dodgers. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code BLUECREW for free entry. 
Bottom of the eighth inning, four to nothing in favor of the Dodgers and Zach Granke. It will be Grandall turning around about right handed now against Araujo. And ball one for Grandall. 14 home runs, all hit left handed. Slicing pop fly, shallow right, that's going to drop. So Grandall, pop fly single. He goes one for three with a walk. And the batter will be Scott Van Slyke. Van Slyke finishing up in left field for Andre Ethier. And let's see if they're going to go to the bullpen and lift the left hander. Hector Norris, whom we saw last night, will be coming in. Arahu goes out, and we'll be back. As the final National League All Star, how you do it? Well, you go to Dodgers.com, cast your 2015 Assurance MLB All Star Game final vote. Send Clayton Kershaw to the All Star Game in Cincinnati. All you have to do is vote now, and remember, voting ends tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So Kershaw now in the hands of the voters whether he will spend the all star break in Texas with wife and baby or go to Cincinnati. We'll see. Van Slyke facing Hector Neris and a strike. The other night Sean O'Sullivan made 123 pitches in five and a third innings. They sent him out the next day and they brought up Hector Neris. Van Slyke with a one ball one strike count now. Neris made 17 pitches last night working two innings gave up two hits. 25 year old from the Dominican. Pull foul one and two. Interesting when you, you look up certain players in the press guide and they'll have personal and under personal you know they'll have a whole bunch of stuff. Two and two for Hector Neris you look up personal and it says Hector Neris. It's nice to know his name. But that's it. OK. He's 25 however and 6 to 215. It's been. A little bit of a workout for the Philadelphia staff. They used four pitchers last night, three so far tonight. Half swing, that's going to be strike three. So down goes Van Slyke. We paid attendance tonight 41,290. 41, 290. 
And Yasiel Pui coming up. He has flied to center, doubled in two runs, and struck out. Hope you'll be with us on the weekend, Friday and Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Then the All Star break, then the road trip, and the Dodgers will not play again at home until the 28th of July. 0 and 1 to Pui. So Peralta and Raven throwing in the pen. Does that mean Granke will not go to the mound in the ninth inning? Remember Kershaw went nine last night. No, oh, we'll see. High fly ball into deep left center going back to the track as Revere at the wall leaps gone. The three got two run home run. And that breaks it wide open, six to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. And for three, he now goes two for four and picks up two more RBIs to give him four. Tweed's last home run was the 10th of June against Arizona. It was close. Revere is only 5'8". Had he been, let's say, as tall as Puig, he might have caught it, but Yasiel felt it was a home run all the way. But it was closer than he first thought. So Yasiel comes alive with the bat. Six to nothing Dodgers. And Rollins flied to right, popped up, doubled. One ball and no strike. It's not exactly Madison Bumgarner or anything like that. Let's face it. I mean, you had the 22 year old Gonzalez and then Araujo and Neres. Well, when you have four RBIs with a double and a home run, who cares who the pitcher was? The Puig's in that mood right now. Yeah, he is. Animated once more. And there's ball four the round. So Alberto Tiasco, who is 0 for 3, coming up. Six runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit against a team that is obviously mismatched. The one pitcher who you certainly could call an ace on the Philadelphia staff is Cole Hamels. Hamels, with a record of five and six, a solid earned run average of three. That's Cole with his arms folded alongside of Carlos Ruiz, the veteran catcher. That's going to be a fly ball, and Ben Revere will handle that one. So Kiaspo goes 0 for 4. And the batter now will not be Granky. Therefore, he's going to stop. He had eight innings tonight, and he has a string of 35 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. Whether he can add to it or not, we'll have to wait until after the All Star game. But he pitched a gem, a one hitter. Now, let's see about Neris. They're going to talk to him about how they want him to pitch to Guerrero. So for Granky, he certainly looks like a lock. He'll be eight and two. He will have 35 and two thirds scoreless inning. The next man to go after would be his buddy Kershaw, but that'll be after the All Star game. Then after that, it gets interesting because now you're up in the high rent district with Drysdale and Hershiser. Ranky will go 4 and 0 against Philadelphia as a Dodger. He will be 40 and 14 since he put on a Dodger uniform. So here's Alex Guerrero. 10 home runs, 30 runs batted in, batting 252.
It'll be interesting who comes out of the Dodger bullpen. High fly ball down the line. Hooking foul drops untouched. Cody Ashey had a long way to go. Jinwei So on the left. If he comes in, then the Dodgers will have used 25 pitchers this year. And there in first place, the Braves have used 28. The Yankees and the Rays 27 and the Rangers 25. Boy that's a lot of pitchers. Before the All Star break. Little chopper Howard on the bag for the out. So the two run home run by Yasiel Puig four fingers. Yep that's what Granky means. He goes out as Puig unloads. However, even though he walked, if Ben Revere was a little taller than 5'8", that might have been caught. Instead, Yasiel loved every inch of it, and it's six nothing Dodgers. Yasiel Pui feeling very chipper about this world we live in. He has four RBIs tonight with a double and a home run. Dodgers lead six to nothing. Zach Granke made 94 pitches and comes out for Joel Peralta. So Peralta will try and get some outs. Granke finishes 35 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. And that'll wait to his next start. The All Star game would be the fifth day for Granky, so he would certainly be able to pitch. Boshi might pitch him an inning. But then his next start will be on that road trip Washington, Atlanta, and the Mets. Big trip. Ball one. Cameron Rupp, the catcher, flied to right, struck out, 0 for 2. Audible Herrera played center field last night. He's out on deck. Right. One and one to Rupp. Cameron, basically the the backup catcher to Carlos Ruiz, but I think they figure the future is rough. Carlos Ruiz, 36 years old, has had a tremendous career. And now here's Cameron, 26 years old. He'd be 27 the end of September. He's out of Dallas, went to the University of Texas, and was a third round pick. Five years ago. Two and one. Ground ball to Rollins. So one out in the ninth inning. Audible Herrera 
will now come up and bat for Neris. Pitch hitting for Philadelphia, number 37, Oduvel Herrera. Herrera last night handled a very tough chance. That was a ball that Puig hit. I mean, he hit a low line drive that took off at the last minute, and Herrera, standing in his tracks, leaped in the air and speared it. Herrera, four home runs, 23 runs batted in. Big curveball for a strike. Mm hmm. Herrera's from Venezuela. Boy, Philadelphia really have some busy scouts in Venezuela. A little ground ball, Rollins backhands comes up firing and got him. Fine play because Herrera flies down the line. So the Phillies are down to their last out. It makes me think. Philadelphia arriving here the way a lot of teams in the East felt back in the 60s they'd be coming out here thinking oh great we get Drysdale and Koufax well I think a lot of the clubs coming from the East now saying oh great we get Kershaw and Granke. Good thought about the Milwaukee Brewers, they don't mind following a team that arrives here to play Kershaw and Granke. Two out in the ninth. Granke, earlier in his career, had a complete game one hitter. That's back in 2009. He was with Kansas City. His second baseman that day was his third baseman tonight, Alberto Cayaspo. 2 and 0. Now 2 and 1. Revere grounded to short, hit back to the box, grounded to short again. So the Phillies are faced with the numbing thought. Of being shut out back to back games against Kershaw and Granke. Fouled away. <laughs> Phillies began the night 19, 18 and a half behind Washington. Crowd now of 41,290. Once that third out, and now. Two and two. And it's a base hit to center. Looked like a slow breaking ball, and Revere singles to center to keep the door open. And that'll bring up Cesar Hernandez. So hit one against Granky, hit one against Peralta. Two hits total. Hernandez 0 for 3, struck out twice and grounded out. There goes the runner. Dodgers pay. No account in defensive indifference, but the foul ball sends him back. Six runs, seven hits for the Dodgers, no runs, two hits for the Phils, completely shut out. 23 in a row retired, and Revere got the hit. That's a foul ball, so he'll come back and try it again. No balls and two strikes.
Phillies did not get a man to second base. They've only gotten two men to first all night. There goes Revere and foul back. Yasiel Puig gesturing to Jimmy Rollins and Rollins having fun gesturing back to him. Want to have dinner? <laughs> no, you're going to get too fat. Easy to figure that out. 0 oh 2. There goes the runner. And they finally get a man to second base. 1 and 2 the count. Two out in the ninth, six to nothing Dodgers. Bill Peralta now struggling to get that last out. Waiting on deck, Michael Franco. So it took a while, but the ninth inning is in the books. Yasiel Puig has a big night, gets four RBIs, and for Granke and Kershaw, just too much for a last place Philadelphia Phillies team. For the Phils, no runs, two hits, no errors. They were never in the game. Peralta made 17 pitches to mop it up, and the Dodgers now wait the arrival of the Milwaukee Brewers. The player of the game, well, without a doubt, and that would be Zach Granke. Granke was absolutely brilliant. Eight innings allowed one hit and nothing else. He retired 21 in a row before giving the ball to Peralta. So it was no contest, and he finishes with his eight innings to give him 35 and two-thirds consecutive scoreless innings. By the way, time of game, a pretty nifty Two hours and 15 minutes. That'll do it for tonight. From all of us to all of you, we'll see you tomorrow, and we wish you all a very pleasant good evening, everybody.